Good afternoon everyone, my name is Samantha Krieger and I am currently a um, education, a music education lecturer at um, the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, that's CPUT in Cape Town and um, it's a wonderful opportunity to present at the Latasa um, conference, especially in the area that I think is sadly lacking in our schools today. And so my topic is connecting the dots with um, literacy and music. And what we found is that um, this conference paper actually highlights the research connecting music and language together with investigating the value and the implications of using music as an effective means to literacy development in the classroom. Essentially what this means is music can help you. It's not just there for fun. Yes, it is fun. Um, and you don't actually need to be this, um, you know, music guru or this musician to incorporate music in the classroom. But um, for now, we're just going to look at what the research says about music and how music influences um, literacy and reading development. Because essentially, reading is the most important literacy development is one of the most important things especially to your foundation phase learner um, and of course if the foundations they are not laid you're going to have problems later so just as literacy is a foundational component of education and it's an inter integral part of everyday life in society music is the same music is continually re around us it's a huge often take it for granted part of our daily lives you know you get into the car and the radio is playing this music in the background um music is on movies um if it's if it's anything like my teenage sons they walk around with um you know the the um, earphones and the airpods in um listening to music so it is a part of our everyday life our Ever. The problem is, is that when we often come into the classroom, we find that it suddenly stops. Teachers kind of feel they don't have any confidence, they don't have any knowledge about music, so why must they use it in the classroom? Well, this paper is here to actually tell you that it, it, it is vital um, to use it within the classroom. And so um, music is actually a part of the curriculum. It's a part of most curriculums around the world. It's not a very large part of the curriculum. It's a small part of the curriculum, but yet it is something that has to be um, implemented and yet we find that in most schools it is not. Um, in schools that you do have music within the classroom you find that it's often done as a standalone subject, it's done by a music specialist and thus there's no integration, it's no integration with literacy development, numeracy development or any school um, aspect etc which is actually also um, not the best because you don't then get the full value of how music can actually help you um, uh, for this case um, with literacy development so if once we have this integration once we can integrate music within the school curriculum and with literacy we will then um, see that effective learning takes place across subjects including literacy development and so um, let me tell you that there's, there's actually so many similarities between language and music. In fact, the human brain processes music and language in similar ways. And so what we find is that research has also shown that music instruction positively impacts reading ability um, through various ways. And we'll be looking at these various ways as we go through them. So, number one, first of all, music helps build listening skills. Let me say that again. Music helps build listening skills. And don't we need that? Children don't listen. And so with music, and this is the first thing that we need to um, understand and that we actually need to try. And so like Mayerski says, learning to listen is a prerequisite to listening to learn. And so for me, listening is the first language mode that children acquire. It provides that foundation for all aspects of language and reading development, this listening. And so listening is also a very um, large part of school learning with students spending about 50 to 75 percent of their classroom time listening to the teacher, listening to other students, listening to the media. 
And so listening is one of the aspects that needs to be developed and you can easily do it with music. So despite the frequency of listening activity in classrooms, we find that the listening skills of children are not good. Why? Because sometimes we expect children just to know how to listen, whereas actually we should be teaching them. So listening skills are not frequently taught. Okay, and this is what Newton says. He says most teachers teach assuming that because they are talking, the students are listening. Swanson actually says that too. But as a result, many children do not acquire listening skills necessary to acquire new knowledge and to process information. And so far too often, listening is taught to well, listening is not taught, but it's thought to be a natural skill that develops automatically but in fact developing very good listening skills requires explicit instruction and so with music if you have a piece of music that they just need to listen to nobody's saying it needs to be a classical piece no one is saying it needs to be any piece of music if you just get the kids to listen to it and you have a set um, group of, 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 of rules or instructions um, that they need to follow while they're listening to it, already you've then got half the battle won. So, point number one, music helps build listening skills. Number two, music instruction and reading scores are linked. Okay, so reading comprehension, which means understanding something that you are reading, is seen as the essence of reading. Durkin says that. And the desired outcome of reading instruction is that you want to be able to comprehend what you are actually reading. So comprehension is defined as this intentional thinking during which meaning is constructed through interactions between the text and the reader. Harrison Hodges says that. But a number of research, research studies have found that children who participate in music instruction tend to score higher on tests of reading comprehension than children who do not participate in musical instruction. So um, we, we found this, that there was a sample size of over 500,000 students, and they found that there was a strong and reliable association between music instruction and scores on tests of reading of um, comprehension. And so we find, and this was done in primary schools and in your, um, you know, going on to high schools, especially in the States in that you find that the student's academic achievement um, was actually quite high and, and those students who actually did um, play the musical instrument meant that their reading scores were high. Now in this way we, we've got to think about it, I mean it's not every child that has the opportunity in South Africa to play a musical instrument um, it's, and, and musical instruments are not ready available. So my first point um, from this that I'd like you to take home is that if you do have a child in your classroom or if there's an opportunity for children to actually play instruments, please don't stop them. Please don't say, oh, you know, this child doesn't have time or this one. Don't come with an excuse. I think it's a brilliant idea to get kids involved in musical instrument. But the voice is an instrument. And so if you sing, you are using your instrument. And as kids sing um, chants or different songs or, or things like that, already they are developing their musical ability. So don't, uh, for me in the classroom, an easy way that you can actually incorporate that is get them to sing. Um, and we'll find that this can actually help with um, their reading ability. And a yeah, perfect example, karaoke. Get them to sing. First of all, they listening skills you've got the words up on the board they've got to follow the words and in that way you are helping them develop their reading skills because they are then reading across their words that they possibly don't know but they're listening to it so the words are there so initially you will start with something where um, that they're listening to the song where someone is singing the words and later on you'd find that um, they would sing the words even if they they um, <laughs> they can't read music but they can see the words okay and so, point number three, music instruction improves verbal memory. And so, another way in which music instruction may positively impact reading ability is through this increased verbal memory. And again, it points back to the point we have before, we'll come there. The findings linking music training to verbal memory are important because verbal memory is essential for reading printed words with comprehension. 
Okay, so as reading progresses from sentences and texts um, to greater lengths, um, verbal memory allows the child to retain this material of memory as it is being read. Um, and then also it helps them also comprehend, understand what they are being, um, what, what they are reading. So verbal memory is essential for all students learning to read. And this is, Brady says this, Stone and Brady as well. Um, they say that this verbal memory is so important and so we find that kids that generally have a poor performance in verbal memory um, they have associations with disabilities for young children and we'll find that recent brain and um, psychological research shows that music instruction can have positive impact on verbal memory okay so um, let's go on to the next one Music can build vocabulary, including English language learners. So, so music can increase your vocab skills. We'll come back to that one too. But many educational researchers promote music as a way to enhance vocab, to enhance the vocabulary um, of the students. And in doing this, they also advance, um, advance the, the comprehension of the students. Um, so we find that there's... According to um, educational researchers, that there's substantial evidence that children acquire um, vocab, incidentally, by reading and listening to oral stories. This is exactly the same as listening to a piece of music, listening to a song. You find that when you listen to a piece of song, there's some. When you listen to a song, there's a piece of it that kind of sticks with you. Generally, it's the chorus. Um, because that's the part that gets repeated all the time. So in the same way, it actually makes sense. There are words that sometimes, especially little kids that sing, and they've got absolutely no idea what they what it means. However, you can use this as you can use a song as a as a comprehension exercise. And so we find that during preschool years, children this is before children can read. They rely extensively or exclusively on oral language. They listen in order to acquire the language. That's why they always say, like, never talk like that in front of your children because they listen to what you say. It's exactly that. Okay, so even when children attend primary school, only a part of the vocab words that they learn is a result of the teacher telling them. It's a result of explicit instruction. What we find is that um, stories that are read aloud to students are an effective source of new vocab. So when you actually, when they hear a song, when you play a song to that, that's new vocab that you can actually um, incorporate. And, and, and it's fun to listen to something. Okay, so like I said, song lyrics, and this is a suggestion, song lyrics could provide a a wonderful source of vocab and of vocab development. Of course, the trick is choosing the right song and choosing appropriate songs. And then, of course, finding the correct lyrics. But you can go on to lyrics.com. There are lots of places where you can find um, the lyrics there. And so what we found is that songs provide a source of incidental acquisition of vocab. And um, especially when it comes to learners, where um, English is not their home language. This is actually um, brilliant and studies have shown that um, the effects of music on learners where um, they are learning a second language. Especially in our schools today we find that the home language is not the language of instruction. And so there are tons of English songs exactly the same where you need to teach a second language and you find that children um, can't speak Afrikaans, can't speak the, the second language that they need to learn. And finding suitable Afrikaans songs is actually a amazing way to teach the language and then teach comprehension and teach listening skills and teach the vocab. Number five, music improves phonological and phonemic awareness. And so let's talk about phon um, ph phonological awareness. It's important because it is the basis for reading. Children begin to read by listening to others read aloud. They recognize the sounds in the words and then they sound the words out for themselves and then they recognize familiar words and so it goes on. And so by engaging in wordplay, children learn to recognize patterns among words and they use this, this knowledge to read and to build new words. 
And so phonological awareness, according to Snow, Burns and Griffith, it refers to the general appreciation of sounds of speech as distinct from their meaning. And so within phonological awareness, but more fine-grained, is this phonemic awareness, which the same researchers explain as understanding that words can be divided into a sequence of phonemes, which is um, a sequence of individual units of speech or sounds. Okay, so um, in her research, Adam states that children's level of phonemic awareness upon entering school might be the single most powerful determinant of their success, whether they will be able to read or whether they can't um, read. To become successful readers, young children need to understand that words are made out of discrete um, sounds and they need to use this knowledge of the sounds to be able to read and to build words. And so phonological and phonemic awareness actually receives um, a lot of attention because research shows that children with these skills are more successful at learning to read than those without those skills. So to understand the impact of musical experiences of children's development of phonological awareness, it helps to understand the kind of similarities between music and language, where the spoken language is comprised of a stream of connected um, phonemes, music is comprised with a series of discrete musical notes or musical tones. And so the understanding a spoken sentence um, requires successful auditory processing of the individual phonemes combined with the intonation or the communication by pitch and hearing music requires listening for the individual notes combined, combined in the musical or rhythmic values. Because of these similarities between this, we find that the human brain actually processes music and language in similar ways. And so that's why researchers have recently verified that musical instruction can have an exciting part and an exciting impact on the young child's phonological awareness. And so we recommend that songs, um, and specifically rhyming songs, is an effective mechanism to build this phonemic awareness within children, and especially um, in early childhood develop development when children are learning to read. So integrating songs, um, helps you with this literacy development. Okay, um, let's go on to music instruction helps children with disabilities um, quickly. And so based on the research above and that I've spoken about, we find that music instruction um, also has an impact of children that are struggling to read. And what we found is that um, there is a connection or researchers have found that temporal connectivity or the ability of different parts of the brain to talk with each other at the same time or in sequence is a key to overcoming dyslexia. And so what we say is that focusing on the use of music instruction, especially rhythm, can improve the timing difficulties with children that are struggling to read. And there's lots of different examples for that. So in summary, the scientific research supports the use of music in early childhood um, instruction and early childhood literacy instruction and also it provides evidence for the positive impact of music instruction in early literacy skills. So specifically scientists have found that um, the evidence that music instruction can improve phonemic awareness, verbal memory, um, vocab development. Um, and also improve the brain functioning related to these areas. And like I said, there's this correlation between music and reading comprehension that talks to each other. So evidence supports the use of music and music instruction for all children and suggests that music may have a specific positive impact, um, impact for children, <laughs> um, and especially those that are learning to read. Okay, and so the implication for schools is that music instruction and music within the classroom is valuable and it's liberating. And if we use music, we'll find that every single child may, we may be able to enhance the child's language literacy and the, the comprehension of music, of reading. Okay, thank you.